Hello everyone, well we're finally here. For anyone who didn't watch the last part, or all the previous parts, watch them. Like, why wouldn't you? But basically, The Simpsons didn't upload this year's Halloween special until after Halloween, so here I am, uploading this video after Halloween too. And this is where we finish it. So far, we've reviewed 81 segments from 27 episodes. Math checks out there at 3 segments an episode. This video we're going to be looking at another 9 episodes to bring us to 36, but the segment distribution will be slightly different this time, so get excited about that. Personally, I'm excited for this to be over. Am I allowed to say that? Is that too negative? Again, I'll remind everyone, I produced all 4 videos in bulk, so by this point, I'm suffering serious Simpsons fatigue. Still, let's jump in. The Exorcist is a long overdue parody of one of the most iconic horror films of all time. Many would say the best. Is this segment the best? No. Is it the worst? No. Is it particularly funny? No. Is it particularly scary? No. Am I going to communicate all my thoughts through rhetorical questions for the sake of killing time? Yes. It's kind of interesting that they make Maggie the centre of one of these segments. They don't do that often. I also like the house party setting as a way to incorporate more characters. The actual exorcist moment itself really isn't that funny. They do have a joke about Catholicism though. If you can't trust a Catholic priest with a child, who can you trust? <laughs> Halloween is the same day as Reformation Day after all. But overall, I just don't think this segment leaves much of an impression. It's not bad though, I guess I'll rank it below dead and shoulders. It only just occurred to me that the big reason why people say the Halloween specials remain highlights in the show is because it's not as necessary that they be funny, which is good because the show nowadays is a lot less funny. Fortunately, with the Halloween episodes, there's other stuff to be entertained by. Coralisa is a good example of this. Not only is the animation actually really pleasant to look at in a creepy way, and it's a parody of Coraline that is able to tell its own story, but it's also kind of an interesting idea. The fact that the entire family is down to get buttons sewn to their eyes to live in this better world is entertaining. I was wondering how they were going to deal with the fact that if everyone moves to the perfect world, it's no longer perfect. They're mostly trying to get away from Homer, so when Homer shows up I was thinking, so is he going to get to stay in the world? Wouldn't that defeat the point since he's the problem? In the end, the big twist is that Homer ends up in charge of everything because he kills the other Homer, which I didn't see coming and I'm not sure it makes much sense, but it kind of works as an ending. The main positive is the animation. Oh, and I like the way they did a callback to the last segment. I'm going to say this is better than Master and Cadaver, which at this point is quite a high praise. Um, goodness me, that was something. Sorry, I'm talking about the next segment, mmm, Homer. This segment opens with a disclaimer about it being uniquely horrific and it really is like a psychological horror. The thing is, this isn't scary, not in the traditional sense. It isn't spooky or creepy, instead it's disturbing. And actually, that's kind of great, because generally the trade-off with these segments has been that the humour takes away from the horror. But because this is a psychological horror, the fact that it's simultaneously played for laughs just makes it more disturbing. Obviously, I'm saying all of this in the context of it being a Simpsons episode. There's more disturbing media out there. But this is The Simpsons, and The Simpsons usually isn't like this. I could go into detail on this, but I tried to keep the review of each segment relatively short, and I could talk about this for a while. Like, just how messed up it is that Homer slowly eats away at himself by some unexplained compulsion. I suppose I should say, on the record, I like this. I like it because being scary is a viable way for a Halloween special to be good, and this is the most horrifying segment they've ever done. You know what? Call me crazy, but I'm ranking this above the Raven. I think I vaguely recall hearing about the segment before, but I've never seen it. For those who don't remember me saying this, in the last video we reached a point where I was watching these segments for the first time as someone who stopped watching The Simpsons sometime in the late 2010s. But even having heard of this, I was genuinely shocked watching it. And that has to count for something. That warrants praise for Halloween. If the next segment after this is boring, then it's going to be in a lot of trouble now that this has set the standard. I wish the opening segments for these episodes weren't so long. Firstly, so my completer self didn't feel like I was obligated to talk about them. And secondly, so that they had more time to advance the plots of the actual segments. Like, the opening here is based on the shadow over Innsmouth, but why didn't they just do a whole Treehouse of Horror segment on the shadow over Innsmouth? That could have been fun. Instead, we get a parody of Invasion of the Body Snatchers called Intrusion of the Pod-E-Switchers. This segment is 
fine. I'm getting tired of saying that. Yes, this segment is an annoying downgrade compared to the last one. The big thing actively holding it back though is the cringe boomer everyone's on their phone subtext. Can you still call it subtext if it's the most forced thing ever? In general, I hate the whole Mapple thing in The Simpsons. It's such a perfect singular representation of their lazy approach to parody. We'll parody Apple and add an M to the front so it's called something different. I guess to be fair, this segment isn't the worst it could be. The worst it could be is boring. The fact I've actively got stuff to dislike is better. But still, this is our new second lowest rated episode. Still above Untitled Robot Parody, which honestly I'm beginning to think won't be dethroned as we reach the final stretch of this video series. The next segment was Multiplicity, which I hate. I hated this. It was so cringe. In general, Lisa does not work well when she tries to have a big personality. It just comes across as cringy and forced every time. In this one, she has multiple big personalities, each more cringe than the last. Obviously it's a parody of Split, which I actually haven't seen, but certainly knowing that it's a reference doesn't make me find it any less annoying. Again, this just gives me the vibe that the idea for the parody came first before they had a good idea about how to make the parody work, so you just have Lisa pretending to be James McAvoy for what I guess was only a few minutes but felt much longer. I'm so glad that I'm watching these segments on my own, because I would be really secondhand embarrassed watching this with other people. If I was watching it with someone who'd never seen The Simpsons before, I would apologize to them that this was their introduction. Being unfunny is tolerable in these segments, because there might be other stuff going on, but here, the main focus of the segment is Lisa performing all these weird split personalities and every single one of them just feels like the same one person trying really hard to be funny and failing. So yeah, I guess I spoke too soon. This is my new least favourite segment. Geriatric Park is actually okay. I like that they did something weird enough compared to the original that it at least feels like they're adding something. My only issue is they really don't capture the feeling of the original film at all. In fact, this episode most of all feels like it's missing out due to time. There really wasn't much opportunity to establish a sense of danger from these dinosaurs. The kitchen scene in the original Jurassic Park is pretty scary, and you'd think they could have captured that energy in the segment, but they don't. Apart from a few people getting killed in a montage, the dinosaurs seem pretty toothless. I reckon this is worse than Dry Hard, but better than Tween Light. Okay, now I'm really annoyed at these intro segments. I was about to rail into this opening segment where Maggie is a demon child for being just a rehash of the Exorcist segment we started this video with, which is a valid criticism. But I was also going to point out, it seemingly has nothing to do with Stranger Things, and only once we reached the title card did I realise this is an elaborate title sequence and not the first segment, Danger Things. Danger Things is a lot more like Stranger Things, I assume. I haven't actually seen Stranger Things because I wanted to wait until the last season came out so I can just watch the whole show without having to wait years for the plot to wrap up. Pretty smart of me, honestly. It does mean that nothing in here means much to me, which is really the sign of a bad parody. I watched the early Treehouse episodes as a kid before I'd seen any horror movies, and I still liked them even without getting the reference. If I showed a kid this who didn't know about Stranger Things, they'd probably just be confused. So I guess I can say this is bad. I mean, it's at least sort of interesting with the weird lighting and this strange extra dimension world, but it mostly just feels like one big long reference I'm missing, and I can't imagine getting the reference would make it better. It would just change this is boring because it's referencing something I haven't seen to this is boring because it's referencing something I have seen, and that in itself isn't interesting. I think one below tween light would be a good spot for this. Heaven Swipes Right has a good premise, even if it has an annoying title. It's a parody of a film I've not seen, but the premise makes me interested to see the movie. Unfortunately, rather than letting the premise set up a situation and then go from there with Homer inhabiting this random guy's body, it instead becomes almost entirely a montage of him just trying out loads of random bodies for his soul to inhabit. I do like the final joke of Mo as a baby wanting to be bred fest by Marge, mostly because it's weird, but overall they kind of drop the ball with this one. Oh, also this is the exact moment where Marge's voice stops sounding like Marge. How do you know my name? So I reckon I'm gonna rank this just below Danger Things. Next, we have When Harry Met Slimy. This is parodying The Shape of Water, which I have seen. I like the fact it's a Selma segment, she's an interesting character, and I find segments focused on her generally interesting. Unfortunately, again, the ending is kind of weak. It's just a load of random jokes about how he's an alien and aliens are weird, but there's nothing about it that really hits me where I live. I think I'll allow myself to jump to the ranking because I've spent quite a while talking about some of these segments so far, above Danger Things and below Tween Light. I don't know why all three segments from this season have ranked next to each other, 
probably the most consistent Treehouse of Horror special, shame it was just consistently average. Toy Gory is actually pretty intense. It starts off being about Bart as the antagonist killing toys, and you assume it's going to be about Radioactive Man in some way saving the day or something, but instead, Radioactive Man dies and they pull the old switcheroo. The toys decide to take revenge on Bart, whereupon he points out the obvious. He wouldn't have actually hurt them in this way if he knew they were conscious beings capable of suffering. And at this point, the toys kind of become the villains, and they turn Bart into a mindless ragdoll who they then proceed to torture. So overall, it's really quite disturbing. No, mm, Homer, but it's up there. Also, the interesting animation style is nice, although it doesn't look like Toy Story. The Randy Newman parody is an extra bonus though. So overall, for actually working well as a twist on what it's parodying, and for being creepy and gross, I'm going to rank this one a bit more favourably than I've been doing so far, let's say just above Dial D for Diddly. Into the Homerverse is obviously based on Into the Spider-Verse, but Into the Spider-Verse had this really interesting animation style, and yet for some reason, this is the one time they don't decide to switch up the animation really, except for obviously the animation for these specific characters. Overall though, this episode doesn't have much going for it. A bunch of homers show up, but there's no real sense of plot. The big Mr. Burns vs. Homer fight at the end is kind of entertaining, and there's actually one joke that made me not laugh, but exhale slightly differently. Of course, the big issue is that they sing. Overall though, this is pretty boring, and they don't even really do much with the different homers being, well, different homers. I think I'll place it just below Heaven Swipes Right, another homer-centered segment about different versions of him. So I was going to say that B9 Rewind is a Groundhog Day parody, but Comic Book Guy points out that this temporal loop thing is quite a common sci-fi trope. In fact, he specifically calls it lazy, and I guess that's true if you do a segment where you just show Lisa dying a bunch of times, and then off screen they decide killing Gil is the way to fix it, and then it's all fine. That's pretty lazy. The only positive I can say about this is that it vaguely functions as a meta-comedy on the weirdness of how Simpsons characters don't age, but it doesn't really make any point about that below danger things, I guess. All these segments where my main takeaway is that there's no real focus all seem pretty much the same. Treehouse of Horror 32 is exciting for two reasons. Firstly, it's the only one to feature four segments instead of three, and that's not counting the opening as a segment. Secondly, season 33 is apparently a return to form for the show, so these segments should be better. And to be fair, the first segment, Bong Joon-ho's This Side of Parasite, is better. Yes, it's a very direct retelling of the movie it's based on, which I've seen, but at least the movie is very well suited to The Simpsons. It's not as if The Simpsons haven't touched on the class divide before. Sure, it doesn't feature the scariest aspect of the original movie, but it's creepy. They have this weird moment where they're really on the nose about the themes of the original story, which was a bit silly, but I laughed when Lisa suggested a great solution, and then all the masses rioted about it being socialism. Ah, Americans. I guess one question worth asking for these four segments is whether they'd benefit from a bit more time that they'd have had if there were only three segments. My instinct is to say a few more jokes about how the Simpsons all end up getting employed in the house would have elevated this episode, so that's strike one against having four segments. Still, this episode with less time is still better than a lot of the recent segments I've been ranking, so I'm going to rank this above A Clockwork Yellow, but below Heck House. Nightmare on Elm Tree feels more like a couch gag, and it would be better if it had been, because then I wouldn't have to rank it. It just feels quite derivative for me. It feels really similar to It's the Grand Pumpkin, which I already found pretty basic. A pumpkin comes to life and sees pumpkins are mistreated in the real world, a tree comes to life and sees trees are mistreated in the real world, and then the ending where the humans gang up to fight the trees feels like a less exciting version of Night of the Dolphin. Maybe I was too harsh on Night of the Dolphin. The final fight was a lot better than this. As an aside, Homer complains in a meta way about the Treehouse of Horror segments, which is why I say this should have been an opening segment, but he also says that the story in the middle is always the worst one. I can't be bothered to work out whether that is true in my rankings, but I can't say it's anything I've particularly noticed. As a spreadsheet nerd, I'll probably end up working out the average ranking for the various segments myself at some point, so check in the comment section and I'll have probably posted something. Anyway, would this have been better with an extra few minutes? No. In fact, this is probably the segment that should have been cut. I'd say this is worse than Intrusion of the Potty Switches, but better than Untitled Robot Parody. Okay, wait, I guess the poetic interlude isn't really a segment. Wikipedia lists it as one. It's literally just a poem that I suppose is a fine poem, and the animation is nice, but it's just very underdeveloped. I'm going to count this as a segment, considering it's in the middle of the episode rather than at the start, and as such, I'm going to rate it above the diving bell and the butterball because I can't rank literal poetry below the episode about Homer farting, but it's too short for me to rank it any higher. The fun thing about Dead Ringer is that it's about TikTok. For a while now, I've been thinking how crazy it is seeing a show that started in the 80s parodying contemporary culture. But TikTok 
feels very modern, and this episode is centered around it. Honestly, I think a haunted TikTok is quite a clever modern way to parody The Ring. I actually enjoy that aspect, and there's one joke that made me laugh here. This is the kind of movie you watch in a museum when your feet hurt! As an avid museum goer, this is such an insanely relatable joke. Especially in foreign countries, you'll just find weird rooms with strange ominous music and a load of random disjointed shots put together by probably just some local university student. I also think it's not a terrible ending that Lisa becomes friends with the ghost, but then the ghost finds her lame and abandons her. Overall, well, I guess for this episode, the middle one actually was the worst. There's a data point for you. As for this, I'm going to rank it above Married to the Blob, but below A Clockwork Yellow. Well, now things get really exciting. See, this whole time I was talking about how since season 36 is approaching, that perfectly divides into four videos covering nine episodes, and some people were maybe thinking that doesn't work, because the Treehouse of Horror segments are one behind the seasons, so there's only 35. But what those people were forgetting is the Treehouse of Horror special, not it. For those who don't know, in season 34, they made a single segment that took up a whole episode, based on Stephen King's It. I thought they should do this for a while. It's so weird that these segments are often adapting entire movies or TV shows, and as such, compressing them to the length of 20 minutes seemed pretty difficult, but to then divide that 20 minutes into thirds was ridiculous. When The Simpsons were on their A game, they could pull off telling a complete story in such a short time, but one of my biggest criticisms of the more recent segments has just been, there's not much to them, they're underdeveloped. Up until this point, I've been trying to put a focus on how many good things are in each segment. Is the segment funny? Is it scary? Is there a captivating plot? Is there substantial characterization? And generally, if a segment has been very short, I've not let it off for being short. The fact is, in being short, it most likely lacks some positives. Well, in this case, the inverse is true. Simply because this segment is 20 minutes long, I'm automatically going to rank it really high because it has much more stuff I like in it. And obviously, I've let myself talk a bit more about this segment than the other much shorter ones, but I'll still try to be reasonably quick. Firstly, while this segment isn't especially scary, it feels adjacent to the tone of the original, which to be fair also wasn't that scary for an adult. This episode also isn't filled with wall to wall jokes, but it does have some jokes I like, although there were segments a third the length of this in the classic era that had more jokes. I really liked what they did with Krusty here. The idea that he's a failed clown who murders kids so that he can imprison their souls in a studio audience and get laughs is actually really clever. I've never fully understood the wider universe of Stephen King, so Pennywise is basically just unexplained as a phenomenon in it. Frusto the Clown, as such, actually has a more complete and satisfying backstory in this 20 minute segment than he does in the two films this is based on. Also, yes, there was a TV movie, which I've also seen, but this is clearly mostly based on the recent films. Also, Crusto is much more clown-like in his theming, which kind of gets lost in the movies. All told, the plot falls into place nicely. A strong antagonist is generally the backbone of a lot of good stories, horrors especially. The characterization is also good. It's fun seeing these adult characters in different environments. I do find it stupid that Marge I guess only fell in love with Comic Book Guy based on one poem, and despite a 27 year relationship and two kids together, all that is immediately undone based on the revelation he didn't actually write the poem. That's insanely dumb. But honestly, since these are technically one-off characters in their own isolated story, I'm willing to excuse that. If this was a canonical episode, I'd probably be more annoyed. Anyway, I'll just say that I really like this, and I would rank it above WizKids, but below Clown Without Pity. Yes, it does speak to a decline in the show, that even with triple the runtime to play with, I don't think this has as much to appreciate as a whole load of other segments from the earlier seasons. This is the highest ranking segment since season 21 though, which is pretty insane. Honestly, since this is much better than over 10 years of previous Halloween specials, I think they should just stick with this going forward. I don't just mean running 20 minute specials alongside the Treehouse of Horror episodes, which they did here, but straight up replace the three segment structure with this. They need to manage their limitations, and they're mostly not capable of writing good stories with such a short amount of time, and giving themselves triple the runtime could make a massive difference. Indeed, here it did. Can you imagine how low my rating would be if they had to cut out two thirds of this episode? to make room for two other segments, I'd probably be left saying the same thing I've said so many times now, that it just feels underdeveloped. Anyway, back to these shorter segments, which at least means shorter assessments from me as we talk about the Pookadook. I've set myself up here to say that this segment is bad because they didn't have enough time to properly develop things. 
But guess what? This segment is great. It's really scary the way Marge gets possessed and becomes a demon. There's a real sense of foreboding, and when she starts to break loose from being tied up, I was actually worried for Maggie. It definitely captured the same insidious sense of foreboding that the Babadook had. It isn't funny at all really, but the horror aspect is enough to massively elevate this. Probably the scariest segment since, well, maybe mm, Homer. Although this is more creepy rather than disturbing. Indeed, there is actually a pleasant ending with Marge ultimately snapping out of her demonic possession. This Treehouse of Horror actually has no opening segment, so they did give themselves a bit more time to develop things by cutting that out, which I like to see. If they aren't going to make segments full episodes, they can at least cut out the massive intros to give themselves more time per segment. Anyway, I think I'll place this just below the monkey's paw, which is still a pretty solid position, and if I wasn't considering humour at all, this would be very high up. Unfortunately, The Simpsons is a comedy, so I can't rank this above too many episodes that are a lot funnier. After this, we have Death Tome, which, from the first frame, I could have told you I was going to like. No matter what happens, this completely new style of animation has to be given some credit. As a parody of Death Note, which I've seen, it's good. I actually like the change that you have to kill people in unique ways every time you use it, although it does leave open the question of how you define a unique cause of death. They did a pretty good job setting up the premise and telling a simple story with it. Lisa is concerned about global warming, so she becomes a climate vigilante and kills various polluters. Then she gets found out by Bart, they have a brief confrontation, and the final conclusion is Lisa becoming a god of death herself. The scene of Mr. Burns dying is pretty funny, but apart from that, this episode doesn't have many jokes. It's also not super scary, but it does have a plot that wasn't lacking too much, and as already said, the unique animation style is a huge plus. Therefore, this is another situation where if I decided to massively wait in favour of the animation, this would rank really high, but looking at it holistically, I can't do that. Still, it's comfortably nestled in the definitively good part of the ranking. Below King Homer and above, I know what you did at did. Simpsons World is really good. What's happened to the Simpsons writers? Season 4 must be incredible. Basically, this is a parody of Westworld where the Simpsons characters are robots forced to perform for Simpsons fans. Not only does this lead to some great meta jokes, but also some good character themed comedy. I like the moment where Homer turns up Lisa's self awareness, but when she starts acting neurotic, he turns it down a little bit. Also, we have another joke that brought on the coveted involuntary laugh from me. Now help me pick out the hottest Marge. The actual moment of them trying to escape the park is really great too. It's exciting and filled with references to famous moments in the show. It just felt like a really fun time, not especially scary, but entertaining. I'm still maintaining a sense of perspective and trying to remember just how good the classic era was. I don't want to rank all these segments super high because they're so great compared to most of what we've been looking at recently, but this is a huge improvement. I think this one has to be ranked a little bit lower because its main strength is the humour, and if that's the main strength, I can't really rank it above any funnier segments. So I'll rank it just below The Devil and Homer Simpson and above Bartificial Intelligence. Next, we have Wild Bart's Can't Be Token. Again, there was no opening at the start of this episode, so hopefully this is an enduring trend. It's a parody of Snowpiercer and the concept of NFTs. It sort of gets a bit too indulgent with the parody for my taste. You know, the concept overrides the actual story. There is some pretty decent mocking of the concept of NFTs, the way Marge has to destroy them to make her own more powerful so she can work her way up the train to rescue Bart, and at the end, Homer's NFT suddenly becomes completely worthless. The two things I'd make fun of with NFTs is firstly that they're just bigger sucker scams. Your picture of an ape only has value if you can find an idiot willing to buy it off you for actual money, otherwise you just have a picture everyone is pretending is worth money. And this leads to the other point that NFTs have no intrinsic value in themselves, making them radically different from actual collectibles. Both these points could make for some funny jokes, which I view as missed opportunities. Overall, considering that this segment does get a little lost in the parody, I wish the parody was a little better. Still, not a bad segment, there was stuff going on. I'm actually going to place this just above the Parasite parody. They're both very similar, but the Parasite parody for me had a little less going on, so I'll give this the edge. Very similar though. A8 it is a parody of the movie Sasevenen, and it's reasonably good. It's got more scary Halloween energy, which is nice, lots of gruesome murders. Also, it's really Really nice the way the backstory of the segment is an alternative history of what if Bob actually did kill Bart in Cape Fear. This then sets up the dynamic between Lisa and Sideshow Bob as Lisa tries to hunt a serial killer. This segment actually has a genuinely clever twist. Each murder victim is described as the first, and it's not clear why, until eventually Lisa realises that all the victims were older siblings. So when it says they were first, it's talking about the firstborn. This sets the mystery up for an exciting reveal. Who is the killer, and why are they targeting the firstborn child? Unfortunately, 
this is when things get dumb. It turns out that the killer is Lisa, and she has a split personality, and she is killing people so she can get into the same prison as Bob and kill him as revenge for Bart. And there's no explanation for why she's killing firstborn children specifically. I guess maybe because Bart was the firstborn, but they never say that. Anyway, the final scene of her actually killing Bob is pretty good, but the lead up to it is quite disappointing as a plot development. So it's a mixed blessing. A compliment sandwich of its own making. I like the beginning and the end, but there's a reveal in the middle that's dumb. But mostly, I've been trying to rank these based on how many good moments they have rather than how few bad moments they have. I'll rank this reasonably high despite my criticisms. In fact, I'll double up on ranking similar episodes next to each other and place it just above Dial M for Murder. Loutbreak is a parody of Outbreak, which I actually only saw very recently, conveniently enough, but instead is about a disease that spreads and turns people into Homer Simpson. It proceeds pretty much as you'd expect and is reasonably funny. I thought the ending was going to be Springfield getting nuked to stop the ending of the disease, but it turns out out instead it ends with the disease spreading and turning the entire world into Homer Simpson, which is the funnier option. Overall, I'd describe this episode as passable, I rank it better than BFF RIP, but below unnormal activity. And that's it for me until a month from now. It's nice to be ahead of schedule and all going well, all four of these videos will be almost finished by early October and I can just wait until the final episode comes out and drop this segment as soon as possible then. With that said, we'll see how well me a month from now is able to match the audio so it sounds seamless. Hello me a month from now, how was your trip to Italy? I'm going to Italy for a week and that's one reason I wanted to get this done in advance so I didn't even have to think about working on videos when I was on holiday. So how did it go? Hey there Michael from a month ago, Italy went well but you're already worried about the nine hour flight to Florida for Thanksgiving. As I was finishing the last few episodes I was wondering if the fatigue of watching so many episodes was affecting my opinion. Turns out no, I feel the same about this episode as I would if I had watched it as part of my giant marathon. It's okay, I like that they don't have an intro again, still inclined to compliment that as it leaves more time for the segments. The basic premise of The Information Rage is that everyone's mad due to the upcoming election, and their anger then gives power to two monsters that start destroying the city. With that said, most of the comedy here is political satire. I like the beginning where it makes fun of the tendency of conservatives to petulantly reject anything new. I assume this is mostly a satire of the whole gas stoves thing. I was worried they were going to lean hard into the whole both sides are just as bad as each other thing, which seems cowardly. As such, my favourite joke is when they push back against this. The conservative monster is just violently destroying things, and Lisa's like, hey, at least the progressive monster will violently destroy the things we don't like, and then the monster just sends a piecemeal political appeal to everyone's phones instead. Anyway, the final conclusion is a Pacific Rim parody where Bart and Lisa work together to defeat the monsters, but ultimately people's political division from social media makes the monsters so powerful they can't be defeated. I'm a little rusty so I kind of forgot I'm supposed to speed through these segments quite quickly, worse than War and Pieces, better than Dead and Shoulders. Fall of the House of Monty is kind of boring, there's just not much really to it. Basically Mr. Burns mistreats his workers and then they come back to life and start haunting him. Nothing made me laugh here so the comedy isn't a big selling point, it does have some Halloween energy with an old dark mansion being haunted by ghosts, that's almost definitionally Halloween-y. The issue is, there's just no substance to it. He just gets chased around and then dies. I'm not going to waste your time or mine by straining to come up with something to say about such a basic plot. Let's just jump to the ranking. Better than Into the Homeverse, worse than Heaven Swipes Right. With the final segment, Denim, we're really ending on a high. I mean, not like a classic era high, but still. The movie Venom is a pretty good choice for a parody. I'm a bit of a Venom apologist, honestly. I find Tom Hardy's performance in those movies really entertaining. The twist here is that instead, Denim is a pair of jeans that Homer wears. The multiple personality aspect is actually pretty funny, and I really like the way that Venom helps Homer out in ways that make sense, like he becomes a superhero because he can kick people, and he's also a really good dancer as well. The big problem is after all this help, there comes one drawback. Homer can't take off his pants and therefore can't have sex with Marge. This is definitely the funniest of the three segments, and the ultimate conclusion is that Homer actually prefers the jeans over Marge, so it has the same bromance element from the actual Venom movies. Oh, and also the novel animation is a nice touch. Overall this is a much better segment than some of the previous ones, I'm still going to rank it kind of low overall though, below in the belly of the boss but above Homerzilla. Anyway everyone, it's finally over. It may shock you to hear that after four videos covering 36 episodes and over 100 segments, I don't feel like really drawing out this conclusion. Thanks very much to everyone who stuck with this, please feel free to go back and consume all this content as one continuous video now every part is out. Make sure to click this video on screen now, it won't be a link to the next part, but it should be a link to something YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks.